Scott Hickel's 45th article for his blog, Does the Grace of God Have Limits? You would never ask this question if you experienced God's grace. You know how one can tell whether or not a person really understands grace? I'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to emphasize just how important grace is because as Ephesians 2.8 says, we are saved in grace. For in grace through faith are you saved, and this is out of you. Is God's approach present, Ephesians 2.8. Now here's the thing about grace. You can't do anything to earn it. The minute you do something to earn it, then it is no longer grace. That is how the definition and action of grace works. Let's define grace. Grace is a gift of God given to man that man does not deserve. The Apostle Paul explains the fact human beings can do nothing to earn grace with this verse in Romans. Now, if it is in grace, it is no longer out of works, else the grace is coming to be no longer grace. Now, if it is out of works, it is no longer grace, else the works is no longer work. Romans eleven six. There it is. Paul says once you do something to earn grace, then it is no longer grace. Our apostle also says that this grace is not out of you. In Ephesians 2, 8, in fact, Paul says in Acts 17, 25, that God himself gives to all life, breath, and all. So everything that we have, be it faith, repentance, love, or anything else, is given to us by God, therefore given in grace. Well, now to the purpose of the, this post. I've heard Christians make statements against grace and speaking out using names like free grace or hyper grace. This is in their religious view. It is, it is a bad thing. In other words, they are suggesting that too much grace is a bad thing or that if we don't act in a certain way, then grace really doesn't apply. In essence, they make people to do something. In essence, they make people to do something in order to earn or maintain grace because us doing nothing destroys human pride and proves that all is of God. The argument from Christianity goes like this. Yes, salvation is by God's grace, but you must do something in order to earn it or maintain it. Christ died for you, but you must have faith, says Mr. Christian. Okay, well, faith is a gift from God given to each in measure, Romans 12.3. Therefore, it is grace. You must do works, acts, or the law, some of the religion, religious say. However, Paul says we are saved apart from works, Ephesians 2.9, not in accord with our acts, 2 Timothy 1.9, and apart from all. Romans 3.21. So does that mean that we don't have faith or that we don't do good works? No, it means that God gives us the faith and the good works by grace. And he gives us some faith now. And they are the first fruits of salvation, not because they did something of themselves, but because God gave them faith. See, it's still all grace. Those that are not saved now will be given the grace later. Reference 1 Timothy 4.10. For, for this are we toiling and bringing approach, or they rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. 1 Timothy 4.10 I have talked about grace in my other posts, so I am not going to go into detail here, but now I want to address the question I asked at the beginning of this post. How can you know if a person really understands grace or not? When people hear that God will eventually save all creation, their objection will go something like this. Oh, grace is... Oh, so grace is free, really? So I can... Go out, murder children, commit all kinds of sin, and God will eventually save me? That response above absolutely proves a person does not understand grace. I would dare say that the person that says this has not experienced grace. Why? Because anyone that has experienced grace knows that grace does not produce sin, but produces good things. This person that objects is really saying that he or she is doing something to earn grace, and at least that part of it is of them and not God. Therefore, they deny the grace of God because they say it is earned in some way. A person that has truly come to the end of self and completely rely on God's salvation through the death, entombment, and resurrection of Christ knows they can do nothing. All their eggs are in the grace basket. Therefore, knowing what Christ has done for them only makes them want to give thanks to God in Christ. In fact, Paul says that believers behave themselves because of the, gra because of the grace of God. 2 Corinthians 1.12 you see, we behave ourselves because we have grace, not in order to earn grace. This is the motivation, grace, that God loves. But in order for grace to be tr 
to truly be the motivator, we must know that salvation is all of God and there is nothing we can do to earn it or lose it. However, once we believe that our actions are, or our behavior are, or our behavior earn or maintain grace, then doing will always be our motivation. This gives way to salvation and grace by human willpower and not the power of God. Rest in his grace, all is of God. Love, grace, and peace to you all. Wonderful day and a wonderful night, and God bless you all.